Um, Simona and Gal are going to be, um, this is probably one of the more imaginative titles of a presentation of this for, for the conference that I've seen, um, a story of data that isn't there. So please uh, give a hand for, for Gala and Simona. Uh, my name is Gala and this is Simona and we um, work for Diagonal and we're gonna be, it's a very quirky talk, so please have some patience. Let's just start. Um, okay, so uh, just as vague as I wanna be, so we're gonna talk about who we are, um, things we, we wanted to do, things we actually did, and then um, what we're doing now, which obviously when you first plan your talk feels very obvious, and then when you're actually doing it, um, everything falls apart, so you shall see that happening. Um, okay, so I'm Gala, and I'm a data scientist, and this is Simona, and she's our UX designer, and we both work, we're both our founders of and work for um, Diagonal, and we're a bit of a quirky company in our uh, business establishment, but one of the biggest things we're after is working in the urban environment and doing analysis, uh, and in particular, kind of focusing on reproducible and transparent analysis. Um, yeah, come talk to us about Diagonal later because we are a very cool company, and um, I think you guys would uh, look us up because we're, we're different. Um, okay, so we started a project in collaboration, so it wasn't, it wasn't exactly a client, but it was in partnership with a company that wanted to understand city legibility. And in simple terms, city legibility has to do with when you're walking around a city, like how lost do you feel? And this changes between different personas. And um, like if, if you're a local and you're just going to work versus if you're a tourist, um, and, and what they do really is set up cities to be legible for everyone. And we're trying to help them from the strategic level. So um, how can you, help them understand a city before they even do any work on it, on how difficult or easy it's going to be. So we're thinking kind of city scale analysis, uh, and we're not thinking get 100% of the answer, just kind of get a bit of a feel, so maybe, you know, 60% is probably pretty good. Um, okay, and so the, one of the questions we wanted to answer is, how hard is it for a pedestrian to cross any particular road in this area? Um, and so, I won't go into all of the theory, but mostly it's like if you think a road is really hard to cross, most likely the way you plan your way around an area will involve not crossing that road. And so that can start delineating kind of neighborhoods in our head of what we think of an area as an enclosed area. And uh, that can happen for multiple reasons, like physical walls, but it could also just be a really busy road or maybe a road that has no crossing. Um, it could also just be like a tram line or something. And we wanted to use open, um, well, OSM data, and we really wanted a simple algorithm because uh, we wanted something that was very, ex like an algorithm that was very explicit, easy to explain, and didn't have any kind of black box stuff. So it didn't seem that hard. How, you know, I can think about things that make a road um, hard to cross, and maybe you should start thinking about how you would do this because that's kind of where the whole thing starts. Um, okay, so great, let's just grab some OSM data for which in diagonal, one of the things we do, we do consulting, but in the background we're building um, like a geospatial computation engine. And so we also are obviously trying to think about features to add to um, our engine, but also using our engine the most that we can. Um, so does the data have the information I need? Of course, the first thing I thought of was all the different tags. Um, and then if, if it does, can I use it and actually do this analysis? in London. Right, so what tags are useful? Uh, it seems like a simple question, but just for not everybody here must know, but um, in our data we have these tags and they have keys like highway and then these will have different values. Um, and so mostly we were looking at road data. Actually, we're only looking at kind of road or path data. Um, and we start looking at all the tags and we start thinking about, or I start thinking about like, well, some tags are there, but I start noticing that a lot of the times tags are simply not there uh, when I expect them to be there. Uh, and I start uh, seeing that some of the values, and actually the talk before this did a really good job at uh, establishing the beginning of this talk, um, because exactly, like sometimes you're one of looking, for example, I thought, okay, how wide is a street? But then, you know, you have to process all of that data because it's not very obvious. Sometimes it's a string, sometimes it's a number. 
And what does it mean for a road to be wide? Uh, you start thinking about the coming in and coming out and um, the different lanes. So it starts getting complicated. Um, the second part that our clients often ask us and was something that's kind of always open in my mind is, can I trust it? Like someone's done this mapping and can I trust it? And actually having been involved in the OSM world for a bit now, um, I believe you can trust it to a pretty good degree, especially at strategic level. Um, you, you kind of want to, when you do this analysis, you kind of want to show that, yeah, look, I can show you some evidence that, yeah, it's trustworthy, you know. Um, and then the last thing is when there's missing information, as a data scientist, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is, can I just fill it in? Isn't that what we all do anyway? Um, okay, so I take all the features that have a highway tag in London, and this is a quirky version of London, is zones one and two, kind of, according to the train. Uh, the tube, sorry, uh, and I take all the tags, I have just the highway tag, whatever value it is, and nothing else. And I map that, and this is what I get. And as you can see, um, it's not nothing. <laughs> I can't just ignore the fact that for some places, all I know is that they have a highway tag and that's it. Um, and what I realize is it's not even, it's not, you know, the missingness is not uniform, and that bothers me already. Um, and so I kind of think, well, I'll just start digging and do some investigating. Uh, and I, when I talk about the data now, I will only be talking about London zone one and two, and I'll call it London, so um, yeah. So the next thing I do, because I'm thinking about crossing a street, I think about footway as, a, as one of the tags in highway, which is, um, there's a lot of. And I start realizing that this is even more uneven and it's definitely not, uh, like doing well being the same everywhere. And I split it into uh, three different areas. I have City of London, Lambeth, and Southwark, I believe is how it's pronounced. And what I start seeing is that uh, missingness is actually quite different in these three specific areas. So if I was gonna talk to a client and I was gonna give them information about this algorithm, maybe I can do it for one area, but not another. And what I find here is that, well, if I'm gonna use a highway coast footway for City of London, 20% of my data doesn't have any other tag. But if I look at Southwark, 43% of my data doesn't have any other tag. So like that's very concerning and I'm already kind of not trusting that area. Now, if there's mappers in the room, you would know there's so many different reasons why that would not be uneven. Um, and so it's not kind of, it's obvious, but it's more obvious once you start kind of computing actual percentages in particular here. Um, and so I like now start have some evidence that the missingness is not gonna, I cannot treat it equally everywhere. Um, okay, so I start looking at tags and like just manually I start looking at tags that might be interesting to me. And as most of you know, if you start looking at OSM tags there and you have a particular use case, you will probably find a tag that you're like, that tag is amazing, that will really help me. And then you actually go into the data and realize it's tagged three times. <laughs> that's not useful. And that's exactly what I found. And so I found um, sidewalk and lit, wheelchair, um, crossing island, um, crossing, which seemed uh, useful. Oh, sorry, there's a bit of a, these are all, these are all values for crossing. Um, uh, and then, you know, stroller equals yes was like an amazing one, but in all of my features here, there's only one tag with stroller, which is therefore a very useless tag. But so I start seeing all of these tags and I find if I just look at my data of highway close footway, I find around 500 different tags, if not more, a couple more. And I cut all the ones that don't mean anything to me like notes and Wikipedia, because I'm not really interested in looking that way. I'm just interested in looking at the tag and this kind of um, different tags that I have access to. And I start getting really meddled in my mind about the data that is missing. And um, Simona and I work very collaboratively and I start talking to Simona and rambling at Simona. And I tell her about how well data could be missing for all of these reasons, right? So I'm like, there's tags that can exist, but sometimes a tag doesn't have to exist. Um, I talk about how, okay, well, when it does exist, when a, when a tag can exist, um, the value sometimes is filled, sometimes it's not filled. But sometimes one of the things I find is that the way things are being tagged 
also has an implication. And a lot of times I find that tags will be uh, filled in with the positive, but not with the negative. Um, and so all of this starts talking to me about like, well, maybe then if that's the case, if the value is not there, that means the answer is it's, it's no on that. But can I really say that definitively and should I really trust that? And what's amazing about working with a designer is that you bramble at them your thoughts and when they come back, they show you a diagram like this and you're like, yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. But in my brain, like it's now mapped really clearly. Um, and so I start thinking about, well, what can I do with this diagram? And if we start looking at specific examples, um, we can think about some technical ways, like I can definitely write some machine learning code that would help me imply some of, the, um, imply some of these values and fill them in. Um, I could also conceive, if I was very interested in this particular idea, I could pay some mappers to simply map the data and the tags that I'm very interested in. Um, so there's definitely ways to get around it, but it's starting to get quite messy. Um, and so I'm just gonna kind of go through this diagram with examples so that you know you get meddled like I did. And so I look at the lit tag, which by the way is missing in most <laughs> of the features that I have, uh, even though I expected that one to be pretty thorough. Um, and when I, what I see in the lit tag is that, well, it should always exist. Some road segment is always lit, or not lit. And so I can already dismiss that tag cannot exist because just physically it should exist. Um, but then I start thinking about this other side, what, you know, the value is filled. Um, and I see that most times if it's filled, it's in a positive direction. Like it's telling me something about the lighting uh, or it's just telling me that it is lit. And so maybe one could assume that if it's not there, I could maybe go around thinking the answer is no. And this feels, comfortable if there wasn't so much data missing within the lit tag. Um, but maybe, you know, for some subset with other tags, I could decide, well, if it contains these other tags, maybe the answer is no. Um, but as you can see, I start going down this road of a lot of uncertainty that's making me quite uncomfortable. And then I look at other tags like crossing, where it never says no. And so this is a different example where well, the tag can exist. It could be that it's not relevant. Like if I have a really primary road segment, you know, telling me that it's not a crossing probably doesn't make any sense. So does that mean that crossing equals not a crossing um, whenever crossing isn't there? Um, so yeah, so it starts getting quite complicated. Um, and I take a step back because things aren't working. I'm going down series of tags and it's not, yielding me more information, it's only yielding me more questions, it's only making those diagrams more complicated and exploring the data, as the previous talk said, it's not tabular, so it's actually quite hard to go down this path. And I start thinking about the fact that, what was I actually trying to do? And what are we a diagonal and, and me as a person really interested in doing? And what I'm interested in doing is not necessarily just ask, answering, can I cross this road physically? What I'm interested in answering is, when I have problems like this, do I have the tools to explore this data? Do I have the tools to select different kind of tag combinations and then understand what is the landscape? Um, what am I dealing with here? Um, I'm very interested, and in Diagonal, we're particularly interested in collaborative work, both with um, our very multidisciplinary team, um, which it is, but also what we want is our clients to be able to explore that data and look at the tags that we're gonna be using for analysis and feel confident that maybe they found a tag that was relevant. Um, and we really want to make tools not to make decisions for them, but for them to feel like they have access with analysis to make decisions by themselves. And what we really like as, uh, is definitely important to us is experimentation. And so what I'm seeing is that all the code I'm writing is, is like too deep and it's not abstract enough to really understand the general problem. And so that's where I uh, push on to Simona to talk to us about you know, what, what we're doing and want to do next. Cool. Great. So um, as Gala was saying, um, as we were working through this analysis and running into these uh, issues, we started to think about uh, how might we integrate some of these findings into 
um, our tool. Um, so how we, we wanted to explore what tools would allow data scientists to um, explore the completeness of tagging in their area of interest. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about two features that we're exploring, um, and I'm going to do that by running through an example. So say you're interested in London zone one and two, like we were before, uh, and you want to see um, road segments that are tagged crossing island equals yes. So you filter by that tag. Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you see the, that selection on the map, uh, those red dots are basically road um, segments that uh, are tagged with a crossing island equals yes. So uh, the first feature I want to talk about um, uh, would allow you to explore the values of that particular tag and their distribution. So as you can see here, there's 25% uh, yes and 75% no for crossing island uh, in zone uh, in London zone one and two. And this is really just an extension of uh, a tool that already exists in the um, uh, OSM ecosystem of tools. Um, the only thing that we're adding here is the ability to uh, look at this distribution for your area of interest. The second feature um, is uh, represented below and it allows you to see whether the road segments that have this tag also have other tags or whether there's and also whether there's um, road segments that have that tag that have no other tags uh, in which case perhaps it's a bit harder to do any analysis on them and if they do have other tags um, you can see um, these uh, you can you can see these in this tag tree which uh, looks for the next tag with the most features. So for example, in our case, we can see that most features that are uh, tagged crossing island equals yes are also tagged with highway equals footway. And if you collapse that tree, you can um, see um, all of the tags all the way to the end of the branch. So follow that thread of the, most, um, the, the next tag with the most features. Um, and uh, the branches would end either when there's only one feature that has all of those tags or uh, when there's features that don't have any other tags. So we think this, is, uh, this would be interesting for data scientists uh, to be able to explore the completeness of tagging in an area um, early on in their uh, analysis but also to uh, get a sense of what other tags might be useful for their um, model. Uh, so say, for example, you're interested in, um, yeah, sorry. So here, for instance, you can see um, that highway equals footway uh, branch expanded. Um, and you can have a look at all of the different tags that fall uh, within, those within that branch and the number of features associated. Uh, but say you're interested in these five tags. You can then select those uh, and see them on the map. So here, uh, the map's been filtered to show road segments that have all of those five tags. And then if you look at the area uh, at the section below, you can then run that selection of tags on other areas of interest to be able to compare. So in our example, what we want to look at is the city of London, which is a smaller area within London zone one and two, and Southwark. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, it froze. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then you're able to start uh, getting that idea that was uh, something Gala was mentioning quite a lot, uh, which is, how well represented are these tags in different areas? Can I trust this data? Um, you know, London zone one and two might actually have a lot of data, but if it's all concentrated in the city of London, because that's where most tagging is concentrated, you know, you won't be able to run that analysis on, on a place like Southern perhaps. Um, yeah, so those are the two features that uh, I wanted to uh, mention and that we are exploring. 
And I'm going to hand over to Galap to do conclusions. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so I guess we just wanted to end the talk kind of, for me, it was the, the biggest thing I want to say is like, you're a data scientist or an analyst, but um, ultimately when we work in things like OSM, our work uh, joins maps to people. And as such, like collaboration needs to be at the core. And I guess one of the things we wanted to pitch in this talk is the value of working with a designer, not when you're done with your analysis and you want to present it, but rather with a designer while you are doing your analysis. Because actually what that lets you do as you're working, as you're thinking, um, it lets you start visualizing not just a map, but your thoughts. And, and it lets you create these diagrams of, of kind of um, the process that you're taking and how valuable that can be. Um, because I think, at least for us, I, answering that specific question is just never going to be as valuable as answering the general question, as creating tooling that lets you take it and then ask questions of your own. That's much more powerful, at least in, in the line of work that we do. Um, and so I guess this talk, although it's all about missing data, the, the biggest point to it is that missing data is really messy and difficult, and, and therefore kind of acting alone as technical people is a disservice to the question. And the best thing you can do is to start being multidisciplinary and adding kind of all these other people into your process. Um, and it adds clarity. Um, it adds value to the analysis. And the last thing that I'll say is that it will also then add collaborative power at the end of your analysis because you haven't just done some analysis, done a lot of thinking, and now put it out to someone to, to describe it to someone else. You actually have added collaboration by design, and that's um, really, really important. And so that's what this talk turned into. Um, so thank you for listening. Thank you both. It's really really interesting and I'm glad you um, you mentioned the existing OSM tool that kind of served as some inspiration without naming it um, I think what you I think what you, I think what you have had in mind was tag info yes the person and the person who created that is going to speak right after um, on, a com on a completely different on a completely different topic but uh, let me see if there's any questions from the online audience before we go to the crowd any any questions from the crowd while I reboot this thing? Oh, there you go. Um, any plans to make Atlas uh, publicly accessible and or open source? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so our engine is in the process of becoming open source. Um, and the the UI is still, we're still kind of deciding there will definitely be some open source version, um, if not the whole thing. Um, it's just time because there's only five of us and we're multidisciplinary. So really we have one engineer. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> we're going as fast as that can go. But yes, it is in the process because we believe if we make it open, that means, you know, any analysis you do on it, uh, anyone else can reproduce. And that's really what we're going for because we're trying to work particularly with places like government to analyze things about your city, which we believe if you have the technical knowledge to then reproduce, you should be able to. I do have actually one question from the um, from the online audience. What's your opinion on how empty or missing data should be recorded? Okay, I don't want to be controversial because I know this is state of the map, but the reality is if you are a mapper and going, you probably know a lot about this process and you probably know about why certain data is missing, what, or this idea that I talked about, about whether the implied no. Um, but um, I found that to be, at least from an analysis when I want to do a big analysis, it's really hard to go into the wiki and start looking at each individual tag. There's like no way I, I found at least, and if you did, please talk to me, where I could like almost um, machine read some information about it. And so I, I do think there has to be a place uh, where we either can explore it. I think that's one answer of how to deal with it. Or another one would be um, a place that may, someone, you know, with a lot of imagination can come up with a way in which I can machine read some information of certain tags and then have it come back to me. Um, that's the kind of only way I can think of doing it in like a big scale.
There's, a, there's actually another question that's sort of maybe a little bit related to this interesting one, I thought. Um, the question is, I believe that there's a connection between editing tool and existence of subtags like lit. Um, for example, Street Complete will encourage this. I don't know if you've seen Street Complete, but um, there's there are certain tools that encourage um, specific tagging in certain areas. Have you have you established or have you looked into any relationship that might be existing between those things? No, not really. We haven't. But I mean, it's definitely. I mean, as a person who's gone in there and mapped some features, not a lot, but some, I can definitely say that the ease of use of a tool affected how much information I filled in. I think. It's a big problem just because it's worldwide. It's not that simple to resolve. I do think, I think there's some talks later on about the evolution of OSM data and the way it's tagged and the purposes. And I do think that should start at least sitting on some of the topics. Yeah. Good. We have time for one or two more. I saw someone in the back there. Just give me a moment. <laughs> Um, thanks for that talk. I'm curious, who are your clients and what type of questions are they asking about the built environment and for what purpose? Um, so I'll speak about me, Gala, um, because our clients, we haven't quite, our product is not specified enough to really have one specific client, but one of the clients that I'm very interested in is local governments. And local governments are constantly doing analysis, um, kind of, for a really simple one is the 15 minute city, which if you don't know what that is, it literally means like within 15 minutes, what kind of stuff can you reach? And this is in some sense, not a difficult question, like grab the data, do some routing and then find out, you know, but this is something that they do to evaluate kind of how good they're serving the community. And um, they usually don't do this in a very programmatic way. And therefore, they're kind of doing it once every five or 10 years. And I think most people in this room would understand that you could probably build a tool that could just do it instantly and could just tell them literally day by day as businesses change and they get updated in the map. And OSM is a perfect tool for this because then if you're a person in the community, you can be updating data and seeing your city improve or deteriorate in the 15 minute city. And so these are the types of questions they're asking. There's also lots of questions around uh, transportation planning, um, especially if you wanna think about transportation planning just from a transport perspective, that's very problematic. And I think we've all have seen that in the car centricness of a lot of our cities. Um, and the kinds of questions we wanna answer is more the trickle down consequences, which is like, well, what if you wanna think about the assets of the city as well as the transportation and as well as maybe some secondary consequence. So this kind of complex linking um, where there's a geospatial factor in potentially one or multiple parts of that linking. But yeah, government is a great one because it's citywide. And I think that's, that's what I really like, but yeah property developers could be a different side to it too. Thank you both. Okay. Oh, there was, yeah, I think, I think we need to start okay. to switch over, but any, any other questions for, um, uh, for the team here? Please I think there's them. one question here, yeah, in the middle. Sure, just, just a quick one. Uh, so as far as I understood, your tool analyzes uh, data completeness in an area, but have you considered also about if the data is up to date or not, or including that information in the tool as well? Sorry, our tool, we are trying to add this to our tool. I just want to be very clear. I don't want to talk about things we haven't actually done. This is what this kind of prompted. Um, the Whether data is up to date, our actual computation tool can just take a the data from OSM at any given point and then compute it on what you've got. So it's more a question about whether OSM is up to date and we all know that's a fuzzy big question that I can't answer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you.